Hello and welcome to this introduction of Awingu 4.1. Let's dive into the details of this specific release. Awingu 4.1, similar to other Awingu releases, comes into four buckets. And the first bucket really is user experience. It is and always has been core to everything that we do. The user experience is really fundamental to everything that we do. Secondly is aggregation. And in this case, we're going to specifically talk about single sign-on of the applications and the different types of applications that we're aggregating. Third is security and auditing. For 4.0, we talked about GDPR, but obviously there's a lot more to security and auditing capabilities than just GDPR. And we'll keep extending in this area as well as it's important to our customers and our channel partners. And the last bucket is really the foundation of Awingu. And this foundation is a multi-tenant and open API based platform. Now let's take a closer look into each of those different buckets. First of all, user experience. In Awingu 4.1, we've reiterated the, the workspace look and feel a little bit, really optimizing um, the, uh, the application to use the full width of your screen. But next to that, we've also added more uh, functionality, such as bookmarking of files or adding favorites to your applications, or which was a very common end customer request, having in-folder search capabilities within the Awingu file section, but also the ability to stretch your application screen or your browser tab across two physical monitors, uh, which can be very convenient if, for example, you're using Excel file with a lot of uh, uh, different columns. And finally, uh, we've also improved the Awingu virtual printer, really making it more efficient and faster to operate. The second bucket is aggregation. Remember, Awingu is in a way, a workspace aggregator. We aggregate different types of applications, be it Windows RDP based or desktops or intranet applications or even SaaS applications. And on top of that, we are also our own IDP. So we enable single sign-on access for the end user into each of those different application types. When we introduced the Awingu reverse proxy back in Awingu 4.0, we were missing single sign-on capabilities for intranet-based, web-based applications. And so here in Awingu 4.1, we're adding that single sign-on capability as well. The third bucket is security and auditing. And here specifically, we've added two things. First of all, token-based access uh, when using the Awingu API. Secondly, password-protected access for support admin uh, access into your Awingu environment. The fourth bucket is the foundation of Awingu. It's really the basis of the platform, which again is multi-tenant, open API based, which is highly scalable. And it's exactly on this high level, highly scalable part that we've added more effort to simplify multi-node deployments and to really make this process as efficient as possible to upscale or downscale environments. Now let's have a deeper look into some of those features with a demo. Hi, I'm Eve, Chief Product Officer at Awingo and proud to launch version 4.1. The first thing that you will notice is the much faster login experience. And when I say faster login experience, I mean much faster login experience, at least five times faster than what you would experience in previous versions. What you will see and notice when logged in is that we make better use of the full width of your screen. For instance, if you go to files, you see indeed nicely how everything is filling your screen and the same thing for applications. Previously, uh, the full width was not really used. In version 4.0, we introduced favorites. In version 4.1, we introduced bookmarks. Both bookmarks and favorites now show up nicely on your workspace. Here you see it. Under applications, I have the most used applications and I also see my favorites. And under files, I see my most recently used files and folders. And next to that, I see my bookmarked files and folders. You can easily manage both of them. Applications, just as before, you go to all, you might, for instance, decide that these applications here, like Bob50 and Calculator, need to become your favorites. You select them by using the select favorites action from the action bar and then select both applications. As a result, just as before, you see them here in the list of all favorite applications and in the workspace, indeed, you see them now nicely visualized under the favorites tab. For files, we have almost the same thing. So you go to your files. In files, for instance, I can go to my home drive. In my home drive, I can, for instance, select the my pictures and I can say, you know what, this is 
a very important folder for me, so I bookmark it. Or I can go to a specific folder and I can select, for instance, this awesome presentation and I also bookmark it. As a result, I see in the bookmarks that it uh, now also lists both the new added uh, My Pictures and the awesome presentation. I can even go one step further and I can, for instance, select the awesome presentation and I can specify that this one is really important so it should be visualized on top and now it nicely shows on top. Favorites and bookmarks allow you to personalize your experience. Let me show you another way to personalize that experience. For that, let's go to the My Pictures. And in the My Pictures, I see, as expected, a list of pictures. If I click, for instance, the Musk picture, I get a preview of the Musk picture, which is nice. But imagine that I don't want to have JPEG pictures always opened in preview, and that I want instead to have them opened in paint. Well, in order to change that, what you do, you select the Musk picture, and you click on Open With, just as what you had before, and we added there the option for you to specify that you want to override the default application that will be used in the future when you try to open JPEG files. Here I indicate that I want to have them open always in Paint. So when I click Paint, it will open in Paint. And every next time when I click a picture of format JPEG, it will open in Paint. Another way to get things done quicker is the in-folder search. What you have now in the action bar is this magnifier. When I click the magnifier, I can filter the selection of presentations that get listed. As you can see here, when I type deploy, I see all the presentations that have a name, including the word deploy. Talking about indeed the action bar, another thing that you will also notice is that the icons that allow you to toggle between the grid view and the list view also have moved to the right, specifically in the action bar. And also, what you also see here is that we also introduced a new icon that will pop up this information panel, properties panel, showing you information about the files, uh, in this case, that you have selected, for instance. Another thing I should tell you about the action bar is that the action bar is pinned now. What I mean is best shown if you compare the experience with what we had before. On the right you see version 4.0. When I scroll here, what you see is that the full screen scrolls. When I scroll in 4.1, you see that only the relevant part of the screen scrolls and that indeed, nicely, the action bar is pinned and all the other parts of the page don't scroll when I scroll through uh, my files. Another thing that you will notice when comparing version 4.1 with the previous version is when you select multiple files. Let me take the previous version and let me select multiple files like this. And as a result, you will see you only have the delete, the copy and the move in the action bar. Let me try to do the same thing with the new version. In the new version, when I do a multi-select, what you will notice is that also download and share actions are now nicely shown in the action bar. Basically meaning that now you can share and download multiple files at the same time. There are many more things I could show you, such as the auto screen stretching. Auto screen stretching allows you to stretch a window, more specifically the Awingo browser window, and stretch it over multiple monitors. And while doing so, the application you have opened at that very moment will also automatically stretch into the next window. And this is just one example of the many tweaks we introduced in version 4.1 to make your overall experience with Awingo better. There are many other tweaks, such as the enhanced virtual printer that will give you a faster printer experience. Let me show you another more important new feature, and that is single salon for internal web applications. Let me show you this with SharePoint. When I click SharePoint here, what you see is a new tab opening SharePoint with me logged in, without having me to specify my username and password. Now, from an IT perspective, the guy managing basically this environment, this is really, really simple. Let me show you. I go to System Settings. In System Settings, I go to Manage, Applications. 
I sure search for the SharePoint application. There it is. I select it and I see indeed the configuration as was set for this SharePoint. Now, SharePoint was configured as a web application, which it is. It was using the reverse proxy capabilities of a Wingo, and indeed I have enabled single sign-on. And that's it. So from the IT perspective, it is really a really small step, but it's a major improvement from the end user perspective. We introduced many other features to make things nicer and more enjoyable. I think about three things. Audited support for using tokens instead of usernames and passwords when consuming the API. There is the, the password protected SSH access that enables the IT user uh, to decide whether support people can access the appliance through SSH based on a simple password. And lastly, there is a simplified multi-node support, which allows IT administrators, again, scale and accommodate for more users simply by adding an appliance without having any downtime.